Welcome to The Fix List, a guide to improving your paintings by looking at other work in search of common visual problems. Today's problems are scale and proportion. And this is just to acknowledge the relationship and size between different objects either in the image or the relationship of different parts of one object to each other. And it's a quick way to confuse your audience and screw up a painting. So let's take a look at some examples from the control paint community. This first one here is a really common problem which is there are characters and there's background and there's not enough variety in the scale of objects to really tell me any sense of depth. It feels flat, it's a little confusing, and mainly I'm not showing off these characters. So here's the paint over I decided to do. And you can see it's pretty substantial. The first thing is that the characters are much more visible because I've darkened everything else down. Here you can see what it looked like before, and here's my version. But really I think the important thing to look at in this one is the size of the planets relative to each other. We have a big one here, and then we have progressively smaller ones in the background. Notice that they're overlapping each other a little bit and that the characters are overlapping this big one. But having big and smaller and smaller gives us a sense of scale. Sure, I don't actually know how big these sort of mystical space dragons might be, but compared to what it was before, I at least have some sense of volume and scale in the scene, before and after. The next one here is an example of surface detail. In this case, there actually really isn't any surface detail, and I think that's the problem. When we look at images, we understand depth and scale in large part through surface detail. Objects that are close to us have more visible detail, objects that are far away have less visible detail. When I did my paint over here, that's exactly what I did. You can see the faraway mountains look like faraway mountains because the scale of their details is the scale of faraway stuff. This foreground here looks much closer than the background in part because the details are so much more visible. Now I happen to use photographic overlays for this, but you don't need to do that. The thing to look at in this is the use of correctly scaled details. Whether they're hand-painted or photos doesn't matter, just that the ones in the background are small or low contrast, and that the ones in the foreground are bigger and higher contrast. So before, no details, and after, correctly scaled details. And that brings us to this one, which is a great example of incorrectly scaled details. And I want to spend a little longer on this one because I think it's a great example. Now, at a glance, this is a really neat illustration and we totally get what's going on. But if you're looking closely, something might seem a little off. And what I'd argue is that the character is at the wrong scale to most of the objects in his treehouse. Now, the way I came to that conclusion is more than just a gut sense. I can sort of look at his arm, which is not foreshortened, and his head. And then from that, I can construct about how tall he would be. It's not a beautiful drawing, but Stick with me here. So if this is how tall he is, I can then use a perspective grid. And if you understand linear perspective, you understand that I can extrapolate how tall he would be moving backwards into the scene. So using that information, I have a couple correctly scaled versions of him. Again, still not beautiful. But what this tells me is that there's some sort of disturbing scale problems with his house. This window, for instance, starts at about his forehead. And if you're building a window in a treehouse, I think you'd want it a little bit lower. The lamp is about two thirds the height of his body, so that's a little bit too big. The dresser's too big. We have some issues here. It's inconsistent, and a lot of it doesn't really match the scale of the character. So this gives us two options. I wanna actually go down the harder of the two first, which is to say, I like the character, so I'm gonna tweak the environment. If that's my general premise, here's what I'd do. I'll toggle this before and after so you can see it again. Here's before, here's after. So I've shrunken down the dresser to be the right scale to the character. I've lowered the window a little bit. Here, I'll turn on my other character so you can see. Now see how the dresser is much more appropriately scaled? The railing is actually fine from the get-go. That was the one thing that was at the correct height. But even things like the number of stairs had to be multiplied. Here there's before, the stairs are just too big for a character of that size. You'd have to kind of climb up them. So what I've done here is added a 
an extra set of stairs in between. And then little details like I've added extra board separations between each of these panels. And these are the things that you can easily make too big. And from seeing a lot of beginner work, people never make things too small. They only ever make textural details too big. I don't know why this is. In fact, if you're looking for it, this is stuff you'll see in video games sometimes too. But little details tell us a lot about scale, and they just give the painting a sense of grounding. It's hard to quantify, but it does make a difference. Now, if you've done all these changes, and it's, it's all sort of correctly scaled, we have this strangely tall roof. This might be like a 20-foot high ceiling. There actually is enough room for a whole second floor. So at this point, you could even add, like I put in a loft here where you've got some stairs or a ladder that goes up, and then you have a second shorter, but still a second floor. This is a collection of appropriately scaled details that are all based on the size of the character. So I'll show you before and after. It was a lot of changes. It took a while to get all these details matching the scale of the character. That's one option. The other option is to just change the character. So let me hide all these changes, and I will just grow the character a bit. Now, in order to grow him bigger, I also needed to raise up this railing a little bit, but really the rest of the details are pretty internally consistent. The character was just too small. So one more time, here's before, and here's after. He's about twice or three times as big, but now the rest of the logic of the image makes sense. The boards become the right width, the window is at the right height, the whole image makes more sense. We determine so much about the sense of scale in an image based on any human characters. If there aren't human characters, we'll look to the next best thing, like railing height, or door height, or window height. These cannot be arbitrary decisions. And it's in nailing those decisions that'll make your image look better. Okay, let's finish off things here with one of my paintings. This cave has some positive stuff going for it, but what it definitely doesn't have is a sense of scale. So what I decided to do was to add some walkways and barrels, you know, the kind of stuff that showed evidence of people, even if there aren't any actual people in the frame. And I didn't take it all the way to a final, but you can see here that just adding some sense of set dressing completely transforms the space. Before, there is no sense of scale, and after, there is much more of a sense of scale. So even if you don't have characters, I'd ask you the question, is there any way you can add evidence of people? Because it might help with a sense of scale. And I want to thank the brave audience members that sent in their art to help with this project. It's not easy to get your work critiqued, so thanks for the help. See you in the next video.